Welcome traders to the SPACs attack. Let's get it started. How we doing traders? How we doing out there? It's great to be with you guys. This is the SPACs attack baby my name is mitch hotch i'm here with my man the brains to the show they've got chris catchy in the house everybody say hello how you doing chris good how about you mitch oh well it's good to be back here i, I i'm seeing the numbers jumping definitely guys smash that like below let everyone know the SPACs attack is on and we're gonna go ahead and get into some great great outlook for 2021 we also got giveaways we got it all in today's show um even a special guest for you guys one of the things that we do is is bring you guys experts and executives and then also what we want to do is if there's you know, if there's uh, kind of viewers out there or kind of people that are really kind of getting into SPACs and, and, and know the industry, we want to bring you on. You know, we, we definitely want to bring on people that want to bring the right information to our viewers. And that's going to be always a value for us. But definitely, we have a great one on. We got J-Mac waiting in the back. So let's let's get started for the show. How's everybody doing out there? Hit the like. All right, all right. Is there is there an echo? I'm seeing some people say there's an echo. Press one if there's an echo, please. Let me know, guys, uh, before we continue on here. If not, what we can do here is first uh, talk a little bit about our giveaway. You know, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do, guys, is start bringing some SPAC gear and, and look. Look at that, man. We have over 700 entries on this. Uh, there's five ways to enter, guys. So definitely, if you guys want to check this out, look in the description below. There's going to be the link there. I'm also going to put the link in the chat right now, guys. And then I'll also show you guys kind of what we can win. I mean, it's not a giveaway if we don't know what we're going to actually get, get out of it, right? So if we go ahead and let me go ahead and pull up my uh, Teespring here store here that I made for uh, SPACs attack. We're just trying to, you know, figure out if you guys kind of like some of this gear, you know. And, and so some of the gear we have is, is uh, the SPAC attack hoodies. You know, you know, I, I know that everyone has heard that song. Uh, I'm a scat man. So this is kind of where I got the idea from. So you know, I'm a SPAC man. I can't blame you guys if you guys are. So, uh, what do you think about the hoodie, Chris? I love it. I can't wait to get my SPAC merch. Oh, heck yeah, man. Uh, you know, I, I've been waiting to do some of this. And, and so I, I kind of thought of some of these ideas. And, and definitely, guys, give us feedback. If you guys have something you guys want us to make, give us feedback. We'll definitely work on it. Um, we, we even got, uh, uh, I, I am a SPAC, you know, and I am the SPAC shirt. You know, I think this one's a great one, too, because at the end of the day, uh, we've all been talking about it. I, I might as well start a SPAC myself, too, right? That's right. <laughs> All right, guys, so definitely check out that link and uh, get some entries in. You know, you got a chance. It's not only the gear that we're going to give out. We're also going to give out two monthly full access to Benzinga Pro. That's $177 value. Um, so definitely, guys, get, get your entries in. Um, we'll, we'll go all the way until 1130s with the entries, and then I'll go ahead and pick the winners. And, and let's go ahead and get into some headlines. What do, what do you see out there, Chris? Yeah, so... Yeah, lots of red out there in SPAC land. Remember, it is the last day of the year. Um, the market is open a full day today, but it looks like we are seeing a lot of selling um, going into 2021. So I only have a few headlines before we get to that great guest that we have, J-Mac, coming on. And then after that, uh, myself and Mitch will also share some picks for 2021. So exciting show. So digging in first here, yesterday's top gainer for SPACs was NBAC. So this is Newborn Acquisition. The company is merging with uh, Nuvi, a charging infrastructure company. Shares were up 12% yesterday. Still down from highs over $20. But charging plays look good going into 2021. I think this one's going to get a lot of attention um, as it heads into a merger vote. And again, all about uh, the Biden administration. Uh, you know, being more friendly to electric vehicles and really rolling out charging infrastructure nationwide. So keep this one on your watch list if it is not already. 
Yesterday, we did have one deal announced, the symbol FTIV. This was the deal with Perella Weinberg. It's an advisor firm. Shares closed up 5% yesterday. Not a huge surprise here. Um, this isn't a, you know, EV play. It's not a uh, high growth name. Um, it was rumored for over, around a month. Um, you know, so this one, again, up 5% yesterday um, on that deal. Up next, we have TOTA. So their merger was approved with uh, Clean Nano Medicine. So the company is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on the development of first in class nano catalysts for the treatment of bioenergetic failure with neurodegenerative diseases. So we've seen pharma SPACs trade higher after approval. So this could be one to keep on the watch list. Shares were down yesterday. Um, but remember, these pharma SPACs have a tendency to rise um, later on. And then we got a new vote date. So symbol ACAM. This is the company merging with Carlots. This is a SPAC that I own. They set their vote date for January 20th. So again, we have several uh, vote dates set for January. Um, we added one yesterday then with ACAM. Merging with Carlots. I like this one because they have the lowest acquisition cost in that online car buying industry. Um, they also have, you know, among the highest uh, margins to their peers. So keep this one on your watch list. And then I want to share some uh, data from our friend Julian Klamachko. Um, he was a guest on our show. So he said, so December was the second busiest month ever for new SPAC IPOs with $11.8 billion raised, um, actually $13.3 billion after overfunded trust were accounted for. That's from 48 new SPACs. This trails only October 2020 as the highest month on record. Um, as we've talked about over the last couple weeks, remember there are lots of SPACs coming in January, so I expect that to be one of the highest months ever. Um, so since July, the month is now $10.7 billion raised by SPACs. Before July, that was only $1.4 billion. So those are pretty large numbers to keep in mind here. $1.4 billion raised per month up until July, and now over $10 billion a month raised from SPACs. We'll be digging into that more um, next week as we talk, you know, what's ahead for SPACs in 2021. Are there too many out there? Uh, that's what I've got for headlines today, Mitch. All right. All right. So, yeah, definitely, guys, uh, if you guys haven't checked out Julian Camacho, definitely check him out, guys. He's, he's a great Twitter definitely to follow. Um, I'll go ahead and get started here. So definitely, you know, one of the things that we do, guys, is is not only just be about, you know, Chris and I, you know, we're not we're not, you know, some guru here. We're, we're just trying to bring you guys the information so that you guys can make your informed trades. So one of the things we do is is definitely look around to see where we can find some information. You know, it's not just, you know, that, that you can maybe look at, at, let's say, Bloomberg. You know, you can always find information from other people and trading ideas come around, you know, and one of the things that you need to do is just always do your research. You know, you take the idea and then you go and you do your own research. And, and that's what it's all about. Out. that's what we're going to try to do today guys is bring you the ideas and then definitely you guys take some notes write it down and, and then we'll see how these go in 2021 all right chris so i i know we have a, a special guest that we want to bring on today so let's go ahead and introduce him here you want to bring him on chris yeah so on today's show um we have jmac investing um you guys in the chat may know him from youtube um where he shares great videos really highlighting some of these spac names I know he's got some wide coverage of a lot of these electric vehicle plays. And then outside of SPACs, you know, I've also seen some interviews he's done um, with Arkimoto and others as well. So great follow on YouTube, great insight. So we're looking forward to the conversation today. So welcome to the show, J-Mac. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Uh, Chris and Mitch, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, of course. You know, one of the things is I, I've seen some of those interviews and, and definitely, guys, if you guys haven't seen it, definitely check out the YouTube below in the description so you guys can go ahead and follow J-Mac. Um, I'm going to let Chris get into kind of bringing you into some of your 2021 stocks. So let's go ahead and, and, and get into this. Let's do it. Yeah, awesome. So, you know, just kind of going with some some random questions here. So if you want to start maybe 
uh, you know, what were some of your um, best or your favorite uh, 2020 SPACs um, that you talked about or invested in? <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, it, it all started with, uh, you know, Nik Nikola Motors. That was the, the kickoff to really me getting deep into SPACs. Um, I rode that up, sold the top. Um, and then, you know, it, it, uh, that really did put me down the path of learning all, all I could learn about SPACs and warrants and units and, uh, you know, the whole framework of what SPACs are. And, uh, then I began to, you know, go that route for sure. And, uh, you know, yeah. So the, I mean, all of the big winners early were, you know, obviously, uh, that also, uh, rode, uh, uh, space, uh, Virgin Galactic for a little while, um, also uh highly on for sure and um fortunately i did also got pretty much sold the top but i was able to sell um probably half of my shares of, of highly on kept some and um it is still a, a favorite holding of mine i think for 2021 i still think highly on is going to break out later in 2021 um and then of course charge point those those were my big plays that um probably made the most money on uh so, so those are my big 2020 SPACs. Although we know uh, ChargePoint has not yet merged, although they were they were supposed to in Q4, that got pushed out, and they they still haven't merged yet. So, uh, I guess you could still say that's a 2021 uh, SPAC uh, still. So, awesome. Yeah. So you mentioned a couple there. Um, you know, I want to dive into. So I also invested in uh, Hylion. I also was able to sell some. You know, in the 40s. Um, but I do still own a position. So this is one we get asked about a lot. Uh, right. You know, I, I love the long-term outlook. The thing here, you know, I really want to see more news from them, more new deals. Um, you know, what do you see kind of as the outlook for 2021 and the catalyst here? Do you think, you know, we're going to get some new deal announcements soon? Well, I think it's all, to me, it's all in, a, a, you know, I sort of, I don't know if you, I, I know you mentioned Arkamoto, but I was the first, the uh, person to um, interview Thomas Healy. And that was like, that's my biggest video on YouTube. It like really did kind of explode my channel uh, because I did it very early on uh, an interview with Thomas Healy and it's my, mo my most viewed video. Um, so, and then I did, then I've also, after, after they went public, like uh, two weeks later, I did a follow-up interview with Thomas Healy. So I kind of got branded as the Hylian guy, you know, um, and then they sent some merch and I had a mer some merch giveaway, all this kind of stuff. So, and, and I, and I constantly, uh, retweet everything that they, you know, um, all, all of their, any news that comes out about them, you know, I'm all over it, but, um, yeah, you uh, so it's all hinged. Hylion is, is completely hinged on, it's not their hybrid solutions. It's, it's completely hinged on them executing on the Hypertruck ERX. And if you look at their timeline, it's, I think by Q2, um, that's when Q2 2021 is when, um, you know, companies are going to begin taking uh, Hypertrucks, Hypertruck ERXs and testing them and placing orders for them. So I think middle of the year, 2021, Hylion is going to break out. And everyone who, it's sort of become a Hylion hater for whatever reason, because the, the thing about Hylion was it's a pre-revenue SPAC. And a lot of these are, I mean, lot, uh, the, 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 here's the thing. I, what I've sort of um, shifted towards is uh, rev revenue uh, generating profitable SPACs. I've kind of shifted to that because the you're, you're seeing the fallout right now in the price of Hylion. So uh, if, if you've got the stomach to hold, if you've got the risk tolerance to hold something like that uh, long term, uh, which which I do as well. But now I'm looking more at uh, revenue generating SPACs. But uh, uh, Hylion, yeah, I think it's going to once it uh, once they begin to announce some Hypertruck ERX orders, that's when it's just just going to go crazy. So uh that's that's really what you're waiting on right now though i mean but if you like i said though if you look at their investor presentation and, and you um from day one looked at hylion and saw their execution plan you would know that it's really not going to be q to q1 q2 because that's the timeline of the hypertruck erx yeah i think a lot of people just kind of lost interest and you know sold at the top there that's why i do still have a position there i'm real excited about 2021 um, you also m mentioned uh, Switchback uh, merging with ChargePoint. That's another one that I own. 
I did sell a small stake in that, but I am still holding. Um, you know, we have the Biden administration charging infrastructure being a major um, play in 2021. You know, so uh, what's what's the story here with ChargePoint? Are you still holding, you know, all of your position going into the year? Did you take some profits with that one as well? So with ChargePoint, I, um, I wind up selling out of my entire position of it because of, you know, sort of, you know, with, with these facts, you, you live and you learn, you, you get experience. Um, and, and so, you know, the, you really have to factor in these pipes. Uh, so, you know, so the, the private investment portion of the SPAC, you want to see the size of it. You want to see the, the deadline of when that is going to hit. So um, and, and when, when ChargePoint just went crazy, was in the high 40s, I was like, OK, you know, now may be the best time for me to take profit on charge point and get back in at a later date when the pipe hits so um that's going to be my plan it, it, it may backfire and i may never get back into charge point but I'm, I'm a huge fan of the company and i think um i think they're just they're they're set up uh i mean you think about like blink charging which is a, a small cap company and it's you know it's trading above charge point or, or was i think it tanked the other day but, uh, you know, less than a billion or a couple billion dollar market cap on that one. And, um, you know, so, yeah, so charge point. And then I also was, was pretty, pretty bullish about uh, um, EV box, TPGY, which I think it has a, a, a faster growth trajectory. If you're looking at the revenue wise, um, they're actually going to grow faster than charge point. Um, so either one of those, both of those are, you know, the, the pick and shovel plays of the space. and um, they're, they're super solid, but I just kind of because of, we had that 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 October you know sell off the the nightmare uh, October uh, <laughs> spac spac sell off. Um, I, I'm much more conservative now with holding long term and you know uh, pre merger. So awesome. So uh, let's dive into 2021. Um, so I know you cover. A lot of SPACs, um, especially in the EV space. So, you know, if you had to pick and, you know, I won't throw out a number, but um, what are some of your favorite SPACs for 2021? And they can be, you know, unannounced deal, have a deal in place still waiting to vote or, you know, even former SPACs. So just kind of overall SPACs. What are some of your favorite 2021 plays? Right. Um, yeah. So I kind of uh, alluded to it, but I think the the, the high flyers are still going to probably uh, be high flyers in 2021. The the charge points, the um, EV box, the uh, arrival, the Romeo Power as well. Um, because I, I wasn't as bullish on uh, Romeo Power initially, but if you just you know if you followed along their story, it was um, very it was clear that uh, they they began to. Uh, because it, the, one of the reasons I wasn't is because it was just like they were tied to Nikola Motors, um, which is kind of like a scourge of the SPAC <laughs> industry, you know. So, um, but uh, when when they started making some deals, they they struck a deal with Lion Electric and a couple other players, and uh, then you, then they kind of validated Romeo Romeo Power. So um, for sure, them as well. I think they're going to be high flyers. But I, like I told you, now I'm, I'm more conservative, and so the 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 um, you, you can look back in, in 2020 to see this as well played out. All of the uh, gambling and online casino plays, uh, DraftKings, um, uh, Rush Street Interactive, uh, you know, um, what's the other one? Uh, Golden Nugget. You, you see all those are revenue generating, profitable companies and, and in a hot space. And they're, they're all doing well. I know there was a little bit of sell off with Golden Nugget, but. So that, that's continuing for me into 2021. So my, my biggest holding right now is DMYD, which is um, Genius Sports. And Genius Sports is, if you're unaware, it's a, it, there's basically a duopoly of sports radar and uh, Genius Sports that basically sell all of the real time live feed data to uh, sports betting apps, bookies, et cetera. Um, and so it's basically, the, it, you know, they have the they have 40 percent of the market and sports radar has quite a bit of the rest. They've got all the players like NBA, um, 
the PGA Tour, a lot, a lot most of your European soccer leagues because it is a European company. Uh, you got uh, NASCAR, uh, NCAA. They got March Madness. So in, in, any uh, of the the betting platforms that want to incorporate that into their apps or whatever, they got to buy the data from or, or have a partnership with Genius Sports. And so it's going to be phenomenal if, like, if you, if you uh, with Hylian, the lack of PR. Like it's, it's literally if you Google Genius Sports and then click the news tab on Google, you, there's first partnership after partnership after partnership, uh, press release after press release after press release. And that's going to continue because they're a fairly young company. Actually, they were formed in 2016. Um, so Genius Genius Sports is my biggest holding. And then I'm, I'm real bullish on uh, Lion Electric as well, uh, which is ticker symbol NGA, which is a here again, it's not a pre-revenue company. This is a an established uh, EV bus making company out of uh, Quebec, Canada that have got manufactured in place. They uh, make their own batteries. They're building a battery plant actually as we speak. Um, so a super established company that they, they, they beat out all of the companies that, that make EV buses. Um, and and they're, again, they again are making all the right partnerships Connect, they've, they've connected with ChargePoint. They connected. I don't know why they connected with Blink Charging, but <laughs> uh, but they did. So so now if um, a school system or uh, you know they, if they partner if if they contract for some buses or their trucks, then you can buy. Um, they they become a reseller for ChargePoint or Blink. You can buy the chargers. Uh, so they sell the whole package now. Um, and and then they also you know they've got like you know some some deals struck with Amazon, small deals and stuff like that. Um, but I just like, I like them because they're an established company. You're not guessing, you know, the revenues coming in and once they go public, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to sit through and listen to some earnings calls where there's actual earnings, you know, it's not like with Nikola and Hylian where you're, you're waiting, you're sitting on the sidelines waiting for things to occur. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a, an established company. So that would be my number two for 2021. And then also like uh, STPK, which is a STEM. That is a, um, it's a storage solution. It's an entire solution. Uh, they have, they have the software on top of, it's, it's mainly a software uh, SaaS company. They have AI software and, um, and then it, uh, but they do, they, they use OEMs to sell the whole package. So, you can get a, a whole like uh, solar package installed uh, via STEM, STPK, and um, and it's just they kind of tick all the boxes because if you if you look at the the energy space, like if you look at one that was slept on was EOS Energy or EOS, I'm, I'm maybe pronouncing it incorrectly, but um, but that particular spec was slept slept on, and after it went public, it's still going, it's running, it's twenty five thirty bucks now. Um, and so, you know, and it, it was a uh, nickel, uh, large uh, solar and utility storage play. This is a similar play. This is, it, but STEM has partnerships or um, they, they already have uh, in place with deals with like Adobe and some big players, Bed Bath and Beyond. So they've already, they got their foot in the door with some big players already you know, uh, S and P 500 type companies and it'll continue, if it's, you know, cause all of these companies are going to uh, want to be more green. They're going to want to be more, you know, uh, and this, and their, their software really does. I mean, if you look at the deal they struck with Adobe at, at Adobe's corporate headquarters, they use stems AI software and it saves them. It's just, you know, crazy amount of money. You know, maybe I think it was something like a hundred thousand dollars a year in savings because of how it basically, um, but how the software works. So, um, and so that was, that'd be my third pick. And then my fourth pick is one that is, is a little under radar. And I, I won't spend too much time about, on it because I want it to stay under the radar. <laughs> it's, it's a catapult, which is a ticker symbol F S R V. And so, so catapult is, if you've ever been shopping online and you go through a checkout process and you either you either you know pick a credit card, you pick PayPal, or you can you can finance it through a firm through a company called a firm. Catapult's the same thing as a firm, where basically 
really no credit check required. And you, you go through the checkout process and you, you can get like 12 month financing. Um, it's kind of, you know, uh, through my research and due diligence on it, it's like a firm is the one that uh, a firm and Catapult, are, they're in partnership. So uh, if if you don't get approved by a firm, a firm passes you off to Catapult. So Catapult is kind of the, <laughs> they get, you know, people that really aren't qualified. So, um, you know, so it's kind of funny. But uh, but at, at any rate, it's, they're, you know, they're on most Shopify websites. The, the, they use Shopify, WooCommerce. Uh, so they're embedded all throughout the web. And and revenue generation is crazy, and and it's uh, accelerating year over year. So anyway, like I said, that's what I want to stay under the radar. So uh, so I, I won't get too much into the the details of that one. But that, that's one I think a lot of people are sleeping on. That in, uh, when it winds up going public, I think uh, institutional investors are going to jump on that one. Um, and then another one is this my number five pick because it is a. It's kind of still under the radar and, and undervalued, I think, is um, uh, GIK, which is Lightning E-Motors. It's a U.S.-based, uh, basically a, a EV retrofit company where they uh, – but they're, the thing about them is they're uh, – they basically any, any kind of OEM can – they can work with and electrify your vehicle. So uh, those are my probably five picks that – I know you guys said about five, so uh, – I don't know. I probably rent, r- rattled off about ten, including the the high flyers. But <laughs> those those are kind of what I'm looking at going into 2021 with big positions in. Perfect. Uh, I have another question for you here. So, um, you know, you mentioned a lot that already have those merger targets. You know, announced. Are there any pre-merger names that you're looking at? And also, you know, you you've talked a lot about highly on. Uh, what's your thoughts about um, Tortoise Acquisition 2, uh, SNPR, that same team that brought us that deal? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, like if I were to – I could categorize, uh, you know, uh, the uh, SPACs without targets as well. I, I kind of do that like, uh, you know, um, I've, I've got a Patreon and, and a Discord group, and we kind of – we categorize – so a lot of my information comes, we have basically my discord and, and a lot of them are here in the, in the chat as well. Um, we basically have a think tank and we, we literally, when, when something breaks or, I mean, we're, we're always following the S ones as they're dropping and uh, we're tracking, we're tracking, you know, who's who. And uh, like, we, we, like day one, we bought Kel uh, Q E L L, which, you know, is, is, should be a pretty good mobility EV type of play. That's, that's one still that's on the radar, but it just ran up and got really hot and probably over way overpriced, I think. So I, I won't be, I'm not recommending that one right now because I think it's overpriced. Um, but yes, Tortoise, uh, Tortoise 2. And listen, there's a whole list of like nine that uh, all of the same, same players um, recently all are dropping uh, their second SPACs, you know, um, like, it's like well, for instance, D, uh, Rush Street is not Rush Street. Uh, DMY, um, they, they've got they've got another one following up. DM, what is it? DMYI, I think. Yep, no, yep. DMYI, yep. Yep. So obviously that one is you know I'm gonna be uh, eyeballing that one, and I'll probably pick up warrants on that one. Um, or just probably day one as soon as you can. I'll probably get those. Um. You know, uh, even uh, Spinning Eagle, which was FIAC and DIAC, which were the other, uh, which was DraftKings. I, I get them mixed up. Which one was which? Was it DIAC was uh, DraftKings? was DraftKings, yep, and FIAC was Skills. Correct. So those were awesome companies. So their track record's proven. So the S, whatever their ticker's going to be, Spinning Eagle, definitely on, that's on my radar. Um Let's see. Switch back to someone in the chat uh, mentioned that one. So yeah, so all of the, all of these guys that are, um, uh, just, for instance, like GIK. That's a that was Tattoo Chef. You know, that was Form Merger, uh, who brought who's, who's bringing Lightning E Motors. So see these guys, they get they get a bit of a, uh, and of course the Shamath. You know, uh, whole <laughs> alphabet of SPACs, A I P O B through Z. <laughs> You know, those you, you obviously want to keep on your watch list and radar, but I think most people were disappointed with IPOC. 
and um, and so now we, we we're waiting to. He's got to basically redeem himself. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but um, yeah, we're, we're wait we're waiting on uh, Shamath to to pick himself up and uh, and clean that up. <laughs> so yeah, seeing seeing a lot of chatter now about IPOD. Um, you know, some rumors linked to them. Um, you know, and maybe a deal gets announced soon. And then I'll talk later about on the show. I'm going to mention IPOF. That's one of my favorites for the new year, since that's Chamas' um, largest one, right? largest one. Um, you know, so I think that one. You know, and it's also the cheapest one of the three as far as trading. You know, towards net asset value. So, uh, Mitch, do you want to hop in here? You got any uh, questions for JMac before we uh, let him go and share some of our picks here? If Mitch is there, maybe on mute. Yeah. All right. So otherwise, so so J Mac. So you know, we we talked earlier. So lots of spacs coming in 2021. You know, uh, you followed this market for a while. You, you know, do you think we're getting um, too many offerings here? Do you think the numbers need to come down? Is there you know some worry about valuations and some you know too small companies coming public through some of these spacs? Yeah, I mean, so um, to 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 that point, kind of like you know, I say like uh, Q3, uh, it was you know there there were you, you could it was easier to kind of sift through and and find what appeared to be what would be the winners and, or what were good companies coming public, but in Q4 it got it got to the place where I couldn't keep up, and even my Discord we were all like you know, uh, yeah, this is just too crazy to keep up, so. Um, now, uh, it, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of minds on, on this, but uh, like I, I'm, I'm of the mind, like Shamoth says, that, that that there's way too, uh, there's not enough publicly traded companies. There's way, there's there's a dearth of companies. Um, well, there's there's a lot of companies that should be public that aren't. So I think there, there's still plenty of companies that um, that, that that we can, you know. Uh, pick through but it's it's really like i said it's for me it's uh it's going to come down to like when there is like a little bit of a sell off or a dip in the spac market you're going to see the cream always rises to the top you know what i mean and um and that's why i'm staying in a lot of these companies that have uh revenue and are um you know so if there is a kind of a sell off that you know you're going to see that those companies kind of still uh, they're obviously going to sell off some, but they're not going to like the pre-revenue super speculative companies. They basically just go back to 10, you know, so or 12, you know, even if they're up, up at 25. I mean, you, you saw that with uh, a lot of these uh, big ones in October. You know, you saw it with uh, uh, all the companies that everybody thought was, you know, you know, couldn't go down. You know, they lost half their value. So. um so yeah, but it's really, it's really it, the the markets become crowded, and I think a lot of new investors are trying to get into spacs, and um, and it's 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 to me it's fun, it's challenging because it's the only type of investment that where you have no idea what the company's going to be, and for you to really you know know if it's going to be a good company, you actually got to get into, you got to read an investor presentation, you got to read some. Uh, you got to go out and do the homework and do the, that. That's why I think SPACs are fun too, really for someone who likes doing research, but for folks who are just hanging on coattails of others, those are the ones that are going to get burnt, you know? So um, to your point, yeah, there's probably, there's going to be a, a probably 40% of the companies, 40 to 60% are going to be terrible companies, uninvestable, but there's going to be probably another 40% that are that are amazing companies that are 10x companies 10 20x companies right so that's kind of my take on it so i'm looking for the 10 to 20x companies so um and i think there'll be plenty of those though yep so, J Mac, uh, I just got a message from Mitch. We're actually uh, jumping over to a separate stream. Um, we'll get you the link here. Uh, he had to restart internet. Um, so, apologies, but we'll get a, a new stream started up here for you, okay? Okay, you want me to drop and then jo join the new one? Yep. 
Okay, I'll do it. Thank you.